Hi, I'm Dr. Lily and this is my pocket pediatrician. As a mom of three boys and a girl, I feel like I'm constantly saying, no more potty talk, get your hands out of your pants, and I don't wanna hear any more about your private parts. Just take a look at any of those boy mom videos and you will hear horror stories of all the things that their sons have done or said about their penises. If you watch one or two of those videos, it's going to seem like half our jobs as mothers is just going to be to get them to stop talking about or touching them. However, there is something really important I want to talk to you about today. You need to know the symptoms you should never ignore, the consequences of which could affect your son for the rest of his life. When the doctor says my child has a condition, I'll learn more at my pocket. So most people have never heard of testicular torsion. It's not something people walk around talking about at parties. However, this is a true medical emergency. And many people have no idea what it is or how time sensitive it is. So just a quick anatomy lesson. The two testicles sit within the scrotum and the spermatic cord and the blood supply and nerves travel down to the testicle from the body and attract. Each of the testicles kind of dangle from this cord within the scrotum like an egg on a string. Occasionally, the cord can twist on itself, which cuts off the blood supply to the testicle. Sometimes this twisting or torsion can completely cut the blood supply off, causing the testicle to die. This is usually very painful, but the outside of the testicle can appear completely normal. If the testicle does die, the only option is surgical removal at that point. Testicular torsion is very rare. It occurs in about one in 3,000 boys. It's most common in boys aged 12 to 18, but personally, I've seen it as young as six, and I've seen reports of it even younger than that. It can actually run in families, but most people don't bring it up at their family reunion. Casual conversation doesn't usually involve something like, hey, did you know I only have one testicle? So many people don't actually know their family history on this one. Torsion can occur at any time. Sometimes it happens after trauma or somebody gets hit or kicked in the testicle. Sometimes it can happen with exercise, and sometimes it happens when you're not doing anything at all. You might be watching TV or even sleeping and all of a sudden you get a sudden onset of severe pain in one testicle. The key with testicular torsion is getting immediate medical care. The testicle usually dies within six hours from the time that the pain starts. Boys usually will develop a sudden onset of pain in one side of the testicle and from that moment the clock is ticking. That means your son needs to tell you about the pain, you have to get him to the hospital, a doctor has to be able to see him, he's usually going to get an ultrasound to determine if the testicle is twisted on itself or not. Or it's possible that he might actually go straight to an operating room where a urologist would do the surgery to correct this problem without even having that ultrasound if the concern is great enough. If your son actually gets the surgery within six hours of the onset of symptoms, there is over a 90% chance of saving the testicle. At 12 hours, the chance of saving it is around 50%, and if you wait 24 hours, there's a less than 10% chance of saving it. The most common symptom is pain in the scrotum, usually just on one side with a sudden onset of severe pain. The testicle may appear red or swollen, but that's often a late finding, meaning that it's probably too late at that point to be able to save it. Sometimes the pain is severe enough that it actually causes nausea or even vomiting, and sometimes there's abdominal pain as well. Some boys actually don't report testicular pain and only report abdominal pain, either because they're experiencing referred pain or because they don't want to tell anybody that their testicle is actually hurting. Anytime I see a boy in the emergency department with abdominal pain, I always do a testicular exam as well to make sure that the pain is not actually originating from the testicle. I also use that as an opportunity to explain to parents how testicular pain is a medical emergency. And I always tell the boy if he ever does experience testicular pain, he needs to tell his parent and get to a hospital immediately. If the torsion is treated quickly, the testicle should survive. There actually are several other conditions that can cause testicular pain as well, and they can be addressed once it's been determined that the testicle is not torsed. We were at a party last night where my kids actually spent hours jumping around in a bouncy house. At bedtime, my daughter got out of bed and came to me complaining that her forearm was hurting. I checked her out and quickly examined her and I was debating if it was just a little bit of rug burn from the bounce house combined with a bedtime stalling technique. But part of me was wondering if she could have sustained a minor fracture in the bounce house. After examining her, I decided to continue with bedtime as usual and decided that if she was still hurting in the morning, we would go to a doctor. She woke up completely happy this morning and no pain at all, so everything was well and that was the right decision. However, if one of my sons had come to me that same night complaining of testicular pain, we would have been in the closest pediatric emergency department getting an ultrasound as quickly as possible. Any experienced parent knows that often the wait and see approach is best. I use it for a lot of things with my kids. But in the scenario of testicular pain, you just can't do it. Sadly, I've seen several kids wind up losing a testicle at a young age, either because their parent decided to wait and see if it would get better on its own, or more commonly because a teenager didn't want to tell their parent that they were having that pain. 
and he was just so embarrassed he'd rather have the floor swallow him up or he'd just be able to disappear rather than have to talk to his mother about his testicle. I've seen kids who've waited for their dad to get home from work because they didn't want to talk to their mom or they just didn't want to talk about it at all with anybody. In those cases, the boys have no option other than to just get the dead testicle removed at that point. If that happens, implants are available for cosmetic purposes, but future fertility and hormonal functions could be affected. Remember that six hour time frame? That clock starts ticking the moment the pain starts. As much as I try to stop the potty talk in my house, my boys know they should come to me immediately if they ever get pain anywhere, but especially if it's in their testicles. At this age, they'd kind of do that proudly, but I know I'm gonna have to keep reminding them as they get older. It kind of makes me feel like one of those caricature sitcom or movie moms that might be really overbearing or overprotective when I think about the fact that as teenagers I'm going to be reminding them to tell me if their testicles hurt. It's not the same as me chasing a teenager around wiping his nose or asking if he has to go potty. Letting my kids know that they can talk to my husband or me about any concerns that they have about their bodies is an important part of keeping them safe and healthy. I hope you feel comfortable having this conversation with your children. Just let them know it's a pain that should never be ignored or waited out. And if it does happen, you'll get them to the hospital as quickly as possible so that they can get the care that they need. You might feel awkward having this conversation with your kids, but it's a good chance to remind them that life is just full of awkward moments. Let your son know that his health comes first and he needs to be able to tell you if something isn't right. Please comment below. Make sure you hit that little red subscribe button over there so that you don't miss out on any new content. Let me know what you think. This is Dr. Lily with My Pocket Pediatrician. Thanks for stopping by. Doctor says my child has a condition. All learn more at my pocket pediatrician.